And we are live. G'day everyone, Mike Jeffrey here and you are listening to My Creative Journey, episode number 50. Well, we made it. Episode number 50 It was one of my goals for um, the end of last year. It was one of my goals for all of last year really was to hit episode 50 of this podcast. We didn't quite make it. We got to 49 at the end of last year, but uh, very glad that we made it to 50 in the new year, the first episode of 2022. I think it's crazy that we're still here. We're still going a year later, a year strong since when I started this podcast a year ago to really document my journey um, as a creative person, as a person wanting to start in 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 a creative field, in a new creative field for me, trying to transition into wedding photography, something that I'd been wanting to do for quite some time now. And, and, and to be able to make this podcast to document that journey was really something that um, I was proud to do. I was really excited to be able to get that story out there. And I'm glad having a look back over the last 50 episodes of the story that I have been able to tell. I think it's been a really nice story. It's been something that a lot of people have, have really resonated with and it's been amazing to hear so many new people listening to the podcast, so many people gaining inspiration from the podcast, um, heaps of different people sending me messages and, and just really saying how how the podcast has helped them and I think that is a real testament to um, what it is I'm trying to do here. I think that was really the aim from the start because for me, there was not a lot of, of podcasts out there for me that I had that really showed that ground up experience that showed from the start and and that was really one of the reasons why I wanted to start this was because um, there was that little bit of a gap that I would have liked to have an insight on someone else as they were starting their own business as they were uh, trying to start a creative journey for themselves so that was me trying to start it as we were moving along it's it's often the story is told as you look back on these things as you look back later in life and think about how it is you started your business how it is you started your journey but I really wanted to be able to document that. Um, as I went along and as I was going through these things in real time. So that has always been the goal for this podcast and it's really amazing to see that we have made it to episode 50 here in the new year. I had a little bit of a break over the past couple of weeks, uh, had a couple of weeks off, but glad to be back in now, glad to be back in releasing the first episode for the new year. It's always good to step away for a couple of weeks. I always really find it very beneficial. I don't think that I realize the importance of stepping away until I actually do take that break. I think you can often find yourself using a, a fair bit of momentum and really trying to push yourself through and, and, and really creating a lot of good stuff. But it's not until you take a step back that you can reflect on the things you have done and the things that have gone right and wrong. Um, I think you can always be caught up on the highs as you're continuing along some sort of journey like that and some sort of um, progression in your business. You can often get caught up um, in the really high moments. So taking a step back can allow you to see some of the things that you may not have seen before and see some of the lows and some of the things that you may need to be changing in the new year. And I think that was really important for me. Important to take that bit of a refresh, important to take a step back to see what is important. I also wrote on Instagram this morning, I read a bit of a caption on a post talking about how things always look larger in the rearview mirror. And for me, I don't think I saw how how big of a challenge 2021 was until it was in the rearview mirror. I don't think I saw um, how big of obstacles we had to overcome last year, how big of a challenge that year was, having to go through the lockdown, having to change styles in my own career, styles in my photography, styles um, throughout my own throughout my own workflow and things like that and, and really started heaps of new things, ended a lot of new things as well. So um, I don't think I realized the the sort of weight that that had and the, the impact that that had until until the end of the year, until I stopped and looked back and looked at all the things that I'd done last year because I had actually achieved quite a lot last year, even if they were um, even if they were mistakes I'd made, even if they were learning experiences, even if that it was progress that I had made in some stages. I think that I did, I did actually do a lot last year, and it's not until you look back and you see those types of things that you can really start to start to understand the things that you have gone through and the reasons why you need to be able to be taking those breaks. I spoke a little bit about on Instagram the other day about my goals for 2022. Now, I started this podcast saying that I wanted to record 50 episodes of this podcast by the end of last year. Now, I spoke about this, I think, in episode 47 about my talking about my goals for the new year and and how I didn't want to create numerical goals. I think the idea of numerical goals for me makes it more more like a to-do list and, and, and I don't really want a to-do list in 2022. I don't want to be only doing things because I have to do them for a goal. I want to be able to look at the type of lifestyle that I want to be leading and 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 create habits and create routines around that and around the lifestyle that I want to be leading. So I want to be trying to do things because that is the type of person I am. I don't want to be trying to do them just because it's a goal I had set for myself because we can often lose sight of the goal. We can get halfway through the year and be dragging ourselves through it 
um, just because it's a goal we'd set, even though um, our whole career, our whole journey has has turned and has has gone in a different direction. We're still dragging ourselves along by these old goals that we'd set way back at the start of the year. And it's it's crazy to me that we only reflect on these goals at the end of the year because there are a lot of different stages where we can reflect on goals, we can reflect on achievements throughout the year and reflect on what it is we want to be doing and making sure we're giving ourselves that time to stop and look back to continue on the direction that we want to be headed on because if, we, if we're never taking our eyes off the road, we can never be seeing what direction we're headed in. So we need to be making sure that we're headed clear down the path that we really want to be going on. And for me, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to set these sort of lifestyle goals for 2022. I wanted to make sure that um, I was clear on the purpose of the goal. If you're not clear on why you're actually making a goal, then the goal itself is irrelevant. You know, We need to be making sure that we're setting goals because these are things that we want to achieve in life. These are the, this is the type of person who we would like to become. You know, if not, it's the type of person that we already are, but we just have to try and prove it to ourselves. And if through that goal um, that allows you to prove it to yourself, I think that's very important. I've had a lot of different things um, over the past couple of years that I've been trying to implement in my life to become some sort of person. And, and by pushing myself down by making it a goal and making it a to-do list item, I think has sort of turned me away from the idea. You know, I've wanted to be able to read more books, um, because I enjoy the act of rereading, but through struggling and, and trying to hit a goal, trying to hit a numerical value has sort of pushed me away from actually reading and trying to take the time to read because it can seem more like a chore. It can seem more like a task on a to-do list that I have to do. Whereas if I consider myself someone who reads, if I consider myself someone who enjoys the act of reading, then reading itself shouldn't be such a chore. Reading itself then becomes something that I enjoy having to do or enjoy being able to do. And if I have the time, maybe that is something I should think about trying to do. So uh, repositioning that and sort of making sure that I'm clear on the purpose of the goal, but also making sure that these are things that I actually want to do. These are things that I actually want to change in my own lifestyle and that the purpose behind the goal is to make me the person who I want to become. And I think that has really led me to a lot of reflections. It's led me to um, the actual episode that we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to speak on that in a little bit. But it's, it's led me to a few things in, in thinking about uh, in my own business and thinking about different things that I would like to become. I think last year I really had had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I think I'm a lot more clear on it. I really want to dig deep into wedding photography and, and really put my heart and soul into that and put 100% into that, really try and go as hard as I possibly can at it because it's been something that's been really rewarding to me um, over the past few months and I've really enjoyed where I've been able to get with it and where uh, it's been able to take me and the, and, and the journeys and the things that I've been able to capture and that has been really nice. So um, really really being able to look to throw myself in in there this year and, and thinking about that in terms of a goal and thinking about if, I'm a, if, if I am a wedding photographer, what would a wedding photographer do? And so orientating my goals around that and around the types of things that I think other people who are wedding photographers would do. So not compromising on some things and, and making sure that these tasks are things that I would normally do as a wedding photographer. So uh, therefore, I have to do these types of things. And, and, and considering when those questions do arise of, is, is this a task I need to do? Is this, is this something that a wedding photographer would do? It makes the answer uh, a lot easier, I think, if I, if I break it down into that. If the only goal I have for the year is to shoot 10 or 20 weddings, then that goal is in isolation really because everything else in the spectrum then opens up and I, I then have to ask myself these questions every single time of every other task that I do in, real, in day-to-day life because I can still work towards that goal while having other things. Whereas if my main goal is to be a wedding photographer, then everything that I do in my day-to-day life, everything I do in my work comes back on that t- on that question of, is this headed in the direction of making me a better wedding photographer? And if the answer is no, well, maybe it's not something I should put so much time into. Maybe it's not something that um, is is really applicable in my day-to-day work. The other thing that really came about over the break is thinking about how I've positioned myself in my business. I talk a lot about being a wedding photographer, but I think if you ask a lot of people and if you ask people who have been following my business for quite some time, they may not know that I am a wedding photographer. They may not know that it's something I do. They may not even know it's something I do full time. They may just think it's something I do on the side. And I think repositioning that and sort of making that front and center of my business. And so I've been considering a lot of different things over the past couple of weeks. I've been considering um, quite a few things, to be honest. And one of the big things that I'm really considering is changing my business name. Now, this has been something that I've been thinking about probably for the last month or so, and it may be um, implemented in the next couple of months. So you may see this 
But you've heard it here first that I may be changing something about that because I want it to invoke more of the wedding photography vibes and I really want to stand that business apart. Stand it apart from the other things that I have been doing, as you guys know. I do a lot of landscape photography as well. I also have this podcast. I have heaps of other creative endeavors and I want to make sure that they're standing apart from each other. I don't want to confuse people. I don't want to confuse the message. I don't want to confuse the branding and the things that I'm trying to do. So that is something that I'm really considering uh, in the new year and it is really one of the big goals for me in this year is to become a full-time wedding photographer. So that is really going to head in that direction and be able to take that business in the right direction. Speaking about wedding photography, I actually shot a wedding uh, a few weeks ago and you may have seen this on Instagram. You may have seen that all of a sudden I was out shooting a wedding between Christmas and New Year. Now, this happened uh, fairly spare at the moment. I got a message of a friend uh, a week before the actual wedding and they said that they were looking for a photographer for a friend who was getting married uh, in Sydney uh, between Christmas and New Year and they were just having a small they were just having a small wedding ceremony and they just wanted a photographer there. They'd already had one but they had to cancel due to COVID and things like that and restrictions and weren't able to have, have anyone else there and they were asking me if I was available and I said, yeah, for sure. I actually happened to be in Sydney on that day so it really worked out for me really well um, that I had to be there. The only, the only problem was that I didn't have any of my equipment with me. I'd already gone away for Christmas so I was back home for Christmas and they asked me if I could be there on that day and I said I could. Of course I said I could because that's an opportunity that I've, I can't really pass up and I'd love... Uh, to be there photographing any weddings that I possibly can and, and to think that they were going to go without a photographer was just crazy to me. So I knew that I had to be there. Um, and so I made sure that I was there on that day. I made sure that I could get there. I went and hired some equipment, went and hired some gear because I knew that it was more important to be there than than to be able to think about all those different things. I didn't want to pass that on to them and say, oh no, I can't be there because I don't have more, all my equipment. I just knew I had to go work that out. I knew I had to be there. I knew I had to make it work for those guys. And in the end, I'm glad that I went. You know, it was a it was a fairly strange experience because I'd never met any of them before. I'd just turned up on the day. Um, they just got married. They had probably the shortest wedding ceremony that I've ever been to in my whole life. I think the whole thing went for about five minutes. Um, I think that was the whole plan of the day. I think they just really wanted to get married. And it was just one of those things. I think they said to me that they'd really had a bad year. They'd had a really bad year. They'd had a few things go wrong. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but had a few things go wrong throughout the year and they really wanted to end the year on a high note. And I thought that that was a really special way to be able to end off a year, especially if it had been a bad year for them, end the year on a, on a really on a really positive note. And I was glad to be able to be there for them when we went and, and we went and had some photos in and around after that for about an hour. And that was really nice to be able to get those. And I'm just working on the edits for those. So hopefully they will be out sometime next week. But that was a really good experience because I'd never thought that I'd be shooting another wedding before the end of the year. I think I said on a couple of podcast episodes ago that I didn't have any more uh, for the rest of the year, but I actually did end up having one before the end of the year. And that was really nice to be able to get a third one in for last year. So we didn't end up shooting three weddings um, in 2021, which is really amazing considering all the lockdowns that happened last year and only starting in March. I think that is a really positive achievement and we're really working on into 2022 and I'm really excited and got some good weddings already booked up. I've got one uh, at the end of this week as you're listening to this episode. So that's really exciting as well. And with all of that out of the way, I really want to jump into today's episode, which is all about attention and where you are putting your attention in your business. Because I think where you're putting your attention, where you're putting your energy is super important because if you're not going to put energy in the right parts of your business, then other people aren't going to either and other people aren't going to realize and they're not going to put their attention in there either. So um, I think it's super important. And this this really came up to me because as I spoke about earlier, the idea for me around my business is that I have sort of these different areas of my business and I don't think that people necessarily think that one is stronger than the other or they don't necessarily think that there is one primary thing that I do in my business. And I've, I was asking a few people, well, what do they think it is that I do in my business? And I think they were a little bit confused. They were confused about the things that I do in my business and the things that I do with my photography, especially. So I really wanted to be able to narrow down on that. And I think that is one of my clear goals for this year. And it's one of the things that I've really been been talking about a lot recently is is making sure that I put a lot of energy into the things that I'm trying to do and put all my energy into one thing before I start to try and spread myself too thin. Now, I normally argue that it's okay to have other passion projects. It's okay to have other things on the side. It's okay to have other things that you're working on. But when those things start to over overtake the main thing that it is you're working on, um, I think that's when it starts to become a bit of a problem. I spoke about in episode 45 about my experiences with financial anxiety and this came about through last year about not having as much secure work and not being able to produce an income, not being able to break even in my business and that was something that I was really struggling with. After that, I've really had to knuckle down and, and sort of show myself that I can really apply myself into one area and make sure that one part of my business is profitable before moving into into other areas because you can't have a 
you can't have something on the side if it's not on the side of anything. So uh, making sure that I have one clear part of my business that is really aligned. And I really want that to be my wedding photography business because I've really been enjoying that. And that's something that I can I can, I can foresee myself trying to do for the next few years. And, and so um, really making sure that I, I really go hard on that and making it clear to people that that is something that I do full time. That is something that I really apply myself in and it's something that I do day to day, that I'm an expert in that area. And then everything else that I do is on the side of that. So making it clear to people that that is the main thing I do. And I think if I put that attention and energy into it, other people will as well. I think this really applies to a lot of different things in life and in business especially um, is is making sure you know where your energy is going and making sure that you're using your energy in the right way, making sure that you're not putting too much time and too much effort into low-value tasks that aren't bringing you any reward. You know, we can talk about the proto principle, the 80-20 principle of 80% of your outputs come from 20% of your inputs and that's super important because most of the time it's true. Most of the time you can think about a lot of different things in your business or a lot of different things in your own life that 80% of the outcomes, 80% of the outcomes depends on how you want to define outcomes, depends if that's if that's income, if that's eyes on, if that's views, if that's, you know, if that's inquiries, I don't care how, how you define it, but 80% of those outputs can come from probably 20% of the inputs that you put into a, into a particular thing. You know, we can think about a lot of different things and most of the time, 20% of the work that you're doing in a particular area will will reward you with 80% of the output that you get back from that actual one thing. So if I think about this podcast, for example, and how I get new listeners on the podcast, for me, by far the most listened to episodes of this podcast are my guest episodes. Now, I've only got three guest episodes on this podcast and and by far those have been the most listened to episodes of all the different episodes, you know. So that right there just shows me that out of three episodes, those are the most listened to episodes, regardless of all the others, that is under 20% of those inputs are rewarding me so much more than any of the other single episodes. And yes, overall, they might be a little bit more effort to produce, but in terms of the podcast, I've only produced three of them. So I, I'm probably not putting that much effort in comparatively to the whole podcast that I've and the whole amount of episodes that I've recorded. So that is something that is is really yielding me a lot of success from just a few episodes. Whereas if I look at something else and how I've been recording the video version of this podcast and uploading it to YouTube, it hasn't been getting any views. Like there are episodes up there that haven't gotten any views at all. And the effort to put in uh, to edit that version of the podcast, to be able to get it ready to go on YouTube, to upload it to YouTube uh, every single week to actually go through that process is, is a fair amount of effort. That's not really yielding me any results. That I'm not getting any views. I'm not getting any new new people who actually go and watch the the uh, episodes of the podcast. So maybe that is something that I should cut. And as a matter of fact, it is going to be something that I'm ending probably pretty soon. I'm, I'm still recording the video for these episodes because I like having the video and I've been really enjoying being able to create Instagram reels and, and, add, and add them on TikTok and things like that because I have been actually getting quite a few views and quite a few new listeners from that. And I know that because I've been receiving a few messages from people. So that is something that's definitely working. But in terms of ap- actually uploading the ep- episodes on YouTube, that's probably not something that's working. So maybe we can get rid of that. In terms of actually finding new listeners for this podcast, one of the easiest ways that I get new listeners is by asking you guys to actually recommend the show to someone else, by actually asking you guys to share the podcast with a friend, with with another person who you think would enjoy this episode of the podcast. That is such an easy way for me to gain a new listener. You know, if I get one person to share it with a friend, there's one new person who has listened to an episode of the podcast. Whereas if I upload an episode on YouTube, I may not get anyone actually look at that. And that is so much more effort than just asking you guys right here on the podcast as I'm recording this already if you would be able to recommend it onto someone else who you think may also enjoy it. You know, that is so much less effort for so much more output, for so much more reward that is going to come back my way. It's the same when I look in my business. You know, I've been looking at where I generate most of my revenue in my business. And by far and large, my wedding photography has already produced over 80% of the income in my business, has already surpassed everything else that I do. Um, And that's just in the past few months, you know. So, it's not always about income and I don't really want to talk about that because I'm a strong advocate on being able to do things that you really enjoy and being able to produce being able to produce a business around that. But I really enjoy this wedding photography as well and that's been something that I've been really been enjoying over the past uh, few months and it's something that I find hard in the fact that I, I'm not transitioning into this just to make more money but I actually do enjoy it and I wanted to make sure and I think that's one of the things that I was hesitant to really dive into it early was to make sure that I really enjoyed it. I didn't want to go... in in case I didn't enjoy it, in case it was something that I just turned up and actually hated every single week. But over the past couple of months, I've really found that 
I'm enjoying it more and more. So it's something that I want to be able to continue to do. And if it's producing me more of an income to make my business sustainable, well, that's great as well. And that's something that I probably should be putting more time and effort into. Now, I'm still going to continue to do my landscape photography, but as it turned out, as it was at the end of last year, I was probably putting over 80% of my input, 80% of my energy and effort was going into my landscape photography to produce me not much input at all. You know, I shot that impromptu wedding the end of last week and that made me more income than selling all my calendars for the last two years combined. Now, to think about the effort that I put into those those sets of calendars for the last couple of years um, is crazy to think that I made more money in an afternoon than I did producing those for the last two years or three years. Yes, it's about I enjoy being able to create those calendars, but at the end of the day, I need to make my business sustainable. And that's one of the big things for this year. And for me personally, is making sure that I'm still in business by the end of the year. I can't be in business if I'm not making any money. So making sure that I'm putting effort and putting inputs into things that are actually making me a profit, that are going to allow me to be in business, that allow me to then do those things at the end of the year, like make my calendars for next year, because I'm not struggling to make any more money by the end of the year, that I have time to go and do those things that I really enjoy. So I need to be making sure that energy is going in to be able to be sustainable in my business. It was at a stage there last year, I think at the end of last year, where it was almost like I was running three different side hustles, you know, and and none of them really were any more important than the other one. And you couldn't say that one of them was getting more energy than the other. There was no real priority in any of them. And depending on who you asked, they would give you a different answer on the things that I actually did. So I want to make sure that I'm not just having three different side hustles this year. And you can't have a side hustle that isn't on the side of anything because I didn't really have anything as my main thing last year. So I really want to make sure that I'm putting all my effort into one thing this year and then being able to have things on the side, being able to do things that I enjoy a little bit more on the side and not putting as much effort into them. But as a result, I won't be as stressed to be able to do them because I know that if I put more energy into my wedding photography business, that it will reward me with more income and more sustainability in my business. And at the end of the day, that results in me having less stress, me not being stressed about my finances, me not being stressed about what it is that I have to go and do uh, to be able to make more money towards the end of the year because I haven't got enough money to be able to pay my bills. You know, If I'm able to be sustainable in my business, then it comes to a point where I can work on other things on the side. I can work on things that I enjoy. I can have those passion projects that I really enjoy being able to do, but not putting 100% of my energy into those when I'm not putting any energy into the, my main things in my business. I think in 2022, you're going to see me put a lot more energy into things like my wedding photography, Instagram account on my website as well, curating that, making sure that I'm up to date, really making sure the blog posts on there are up to date, being more active with my marketing material. These are things that I was really slack on towards the end of last year. These are things that probably should come along with someone who is a wedding photographer. If I classify myself, if I go back to the start of the episode when I said that I was a wedding photographer, those are things that I probably should be trying to do. You know, those are uh, those are main things. Those are things that are primary things that I have to do first in order to do other things. Remember that money flows where the attention goes. That old saying that where you put your attention is where the money is going to go. Where people can see you turning up, where people can see you being consistent is where they're going to think, well, this person's really in it for the long run. This person's in it. They're an experienced person in this and they're actually making stuff that I really enjoy. So I'm going to go inquire with them. I'm going to go and try and get work from them because I really like what it is they do. And I can see that they have so much passion and so much energy in this one thing. If you put all your attention in that one thing in business, I think a lot of people will be gravitated towards you and you will naturally bring people in. So that is something that I'm going to be trying to be doing um, through the course of this year is, is trying to make sure that I'm strong on that one thing that it is that I do. I really think I had to sit back and question why I hadn't done this before, why this wasn't something that I jumped into before. And as I said, I think that one of the things was that I wasn't quite sure whether this was what I wanted to do. There was a big stage of last year where I thought, I'll try it, but I'm not sure whether this is something that I want to jump into 100% of the time. This is not something that I want to throw myself in. But I think through the course of the year, it came up to me more and more. The more and more I was out there taking photos of people, going to weddings, it made me feel like this was what I was meant to do. It made me feel like I belong. It made me feel like this was just the most incredible work to turn up to each and every week. So I think partly that was what was holding me back is just wanting to be sure, wanting to be sure that this was what I was meant to do. And, and at the end of the day, I'm really glad that this is something that I am diving into. I think also holding me back was something that I was scared that it wasn't going to work out financially for me. You know, I didn't think there was any money in it. I didn't think that um, it was something that would be able to be profitable. I didn't think that I would be able to get any inquiries. I thought, why would anyone want to inquire with me? And with that sort of mindset, you're probably not going to get many inquiries at all. So 
having to have a big adjustment on yourself and having to think about your own mindset in that, having to think about there is a lot of work out there. There's a lot of people who will be interested in your services. If you put effort into it, other people will put effort into you as well. And I think at the end, I was probably scared of the hard work. This is not going to be easy. You know, it's not going to be easy to turn up every single day. It's not going to be easy to turn up every single week to put all of your energy into one thing, to put all your eggs in one basket and throw yourself into one thing. But I think at the end of the year, I think I'll look back on this year and say, I'm glad that I threw myself in and it'll either really work or it really will end up really bad for me, you know, and either way, I think that's a success. Either way, I've worked it out. Either way, I've realized what it is that I need to do because if it all doesn't work for me, then at least I know. At least I've tried it and at least I've given it my 100%. You know, I don't think that's ever going to be the case. I don't think you can throw yourself in and nothing's ever going to happen from it. But I know that if I only give it 50%, then I'm not going to get anywhere. You know, I can guarantee that. I can guarantee that if I only put 50% into this, that it's never going to get me anywhere. So I've got to put at least 100% and at least try. And that is one of the things, even if it's hard, I know it's going to be worth it in the long run. I know that the energy and the attention needs to go into one thing before I can start trying to do all these different other things. So that is where I'm going to leave today's episode, guys. I hope you really did enjoy this. A little bit about me speaking about where I'm headed for this next year and I've really been enjoying this. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the podcast. As I said before, if you appreciated this episode, if you enjoy any of my episodes, I would really appreciate it if you would share this episode with someone else who you think may also enjoy this podcast. I've been getting a lot of new listeners recently um, and I really appreciate having anyone here, anyone who's starting on their own creative journey, anyone who is taking those first few steps. I think it's so important to be able to hear from other different people. So I really appreciate you guys turning up here every single week. And if you have been enjoying the podcast, I would love it if you would consider leaving me a rating or a review on your podcast app of choice. If you're listening on Spotify, you can now leave a rating over there. So if you're on the Spotify app now listening, you can head to my Creative Journey podcast, the Spotify page there and leave a rating straight on the page. I would really appreciate that and it really helps to get it out to other new listeners of the podcast. And exactly the same on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a rating and review over there. And I would really much appreciate that. But until next week, guys, I hope you all have a great week and I will speak to you all again next Monday. Bye.